This is lesson 7.6, Double Angle Identities. In this lesson, like the majority of the lessons in this unit, uh, we're going to be using these identities to prove other ones. So you notice that we're given one, two, three, four, five identities. Um, they are all called double identities like this because we have sine of two theta, tangent of two theta, like so. Okay. Uh, in class, we will show uh, where these uh, identities come from. In fact, uh, a number of them are just uh, derivatives of the Pythagorean identity. Uh, so let's uh, dive into example uh, number one right here. Uh, notice it says, uh, given angle theta is in standard position with its terminal arm in quadrant four, and cosecant theta, can you make a change and change it to cosine of theta? Um, then determine the exact value of each of these trigonometric ratios. So you'll notice that I have sine two theta, and at the bottom of this page I have cosine of two theta. Uh, so what I want to do first is I want to go and draw my triangle that I have right here. Now they gave me some information. They told us that we are in quadrant four. So I'm going to go and draw my triangle in quadrant four. The ratio for cosine is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. If we were to quickly use Pythagoras to figure out this missing side, we'd have 25. Uh, 5 squared minus 4 is the square root of 21. And then, of course, it's negative because we've gone downward. All right. And so if we use one of the identities that we have up here, uh, the sine 2 theta identity, this one right here, we can say that this identity is actually equal to 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. So now that we have those identities figured out, why don't we use this information that we have over here on the right-hand side, and we can substitute in that information. So the 2 is going to stay the same. Now we're looking for sine of theta. So the ratio for sines coming from my reference angle right here is going to be negative um, root 21 over 5, because we have my op opposite over my hypotenuse. So we have negative root 21 all over 5, like so. So that's sine of theta. And then cosine of theta is going to be just 2 over 5, my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Now if we go and simplify this, we have 2 times 2, those being in the numerator, gives me a uh, negative 4 with that negative 1 out in front. And then we have a square root of 21 all over 25. Okay, So that would be the exact value of this uh, trigonometric ratio that we have right here when we know that cosine of theta is equal to 2 fifths. All right? So let's go and do the same thing down here. Okay, so the next one we have here says we have cosine of 2 theta. So I'm going to use the identity that says that cosine of 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And then all I need to do is I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to reference what cosine of theta is equal to. So if you recall, uh, we use that right here with the 2 over 5. We got that from this triangle. My adjacent or my hot hypotenuse is 2 over 5. So if we substitute that information in, we now have 2, and the 2 just stays there. Cosine of theta, we're saying, is 2 over 5, so we're going to have to go and square that, and then we subtract 1. Okay. So order of operations here says that we need to deal with our exponents. Uh, 2 squared is 4. Uh, 5 squared is 25, like so. That's going to get multiplied by 2, and then we subtract 1. Uh, 2 times this, this is just 2 over 1, so that gives me 8 over 25. Minus, we're going to have to get ourselves a common denominator, which gives me 25 over 25. And when we subtract 8 minus 25, we're left with negative 17 over 25 would be the exact value of what cosine 2 theta is given the information that we started with at the top of this question. Okay. All right, example 2 says write each expression as a single trigonometric ratio and then evaluate where possible. It's a tiny little typo right here. I have pi over 2 and pi over 4. Can you make them both pi over 4? So those both need to be the same. Okay, uh, So if we go and um, uh, try to uh, write this as a single trigonometric ratio, we're going to likely need to use uh, one of those trig ratios. So notice that we're, we're taking something that looks complicated. We're trying to make it look at one of the simpler ones. Well, if you recall, we have uh, one of those identities that says that cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is actually equal to cosine 2 theta. So uh, I'm just going to write what we're going to use up here. So we're going to use um, that cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is really what we have right here, is equal to cosine of 2 theta. So I'm going to take all this information, and I'm going to write cosine of 2 theta. And then we know what our theta really is. Our theta is pi over 4. Okay. Well, what we can do there is we can simplify a little bit. If you multiply this, the 2 is going to give you 2 times pi, so 2 pi over 4, which is simplified to be pi over 2. Okay. Now, what is pi over 2? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw my little triangle. Okay. And if you recall how this is going to work, I would put pi over 2 right there. And it might help you if you think what pi over 2 is as an angle. 
pi over 2 in it as, uh, or I should say as a degree, that is uh, 180 divided by 2 or 90 degrees. Well, if it's 90 degrees, then that means it's pointed straight up here, right? So that makes this kind of imaginary triangle, where this is in fact 0, this is 1, and this is 1. Well, that helps me quite a bit, because I'm looking for the ratios of the sides for this angle. Well, the ratios for cosine would be your adjacent over your hypotenuse, which is 0 over 1. So I can say that cosine of pi over 2 is actually equal to 0, okay, without ever touching my calculator. Now, granted, if you're in radian mode and you put in cosine of pi over 2, you're just going to get 0. All right, let's go to B. So this time, uh, we have 2 tangent of pi over 6 and then tangent squared of pi over 6 minus 1. Well, this looks fairly close, and I say fairly close because it's not exact, um, to one of the uh, identities that we know from this unit. So I'm thinking that we're going to use, so I'll write this down first, we're going to use the identity that 2 tangent of theta all over 1 minus tangent squared theta is equal to tangent of 2 theta. Now, if you take a look at this, you'll notice that those aren't quite the same. The numerators look the same, but the denominator is kind of opposite. And so what we're going to end up having to do here is we're going to have to multiply the identity by a negative. Because if you see, if I was to multiply this by a negative and change that to be a negative, now they are the same. So essentially what we're doing is we have to multiply it by this negative right here. Okay? So this is not going to be equal to, so if I write here, tangent 2 theta, I'm saying it's not going to be equal to this. It's going to be equal to negative of tangent of 2 theta. And again, the reason is, is just because that denominator did not match. All right. So now, if I substitute in the value that we have uh, for theta, that is pi over 6. So that goes right there. Uh, 2 times pi over 6 is just going to give you a negative tangent of pi over 3, like so. Again, I'm going to go and draw that uh, special triangle, or sorry, not the special triangle. Actually, this one ends up being a special triangle. All right, again, I'm going to go and draw out our triangles to give ourselves kind of a, an idea of what's going on here. Um, we have pi over 3, so we're trying to figure out what the ratios are for the sides. Well, pi over 3, uh, we would set right here. Remember what pi over 3 is? That's the same thing as 60 degrees. So that would tell me this side is root 3, this side is 1, and this side is technically 2. And so then I can say that the tangent of pi over 3 is just equal to root 3 over 1. Okay. And then because I have that negative right there, I would say that we have... So I can say that the so I can say that the value of negative tangent of pi over three is root three over one, and then I have the negative that's sitting there. So I would say negative root three. All right. So that is the um, final answer for that question. All right. Let's go on to the next page. Example three says prove each identity. Cotangent of theta is equal to cosine squared theta plus one divided by sine. All right, example three says prove each identity. Notice here we have cotangent of theta is equal to cos 2 theta plus 1, and then sine. <clears throat> example three here says prove each identity. We have cotangent of theta is equal to cosine 2 theta plus 1, all divided by sine 2 theta. Well, again, I would always suggest that you start with the side that looks more complicated. All right, And so um, what I'm going to do here is start with the right-hand side. And one of the ratios that you definitely don't really have any choice on is the sine 2 theta. If you use your identities right there, that is equivalent to 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. Okay. And then the other one that I'm going to use is that uh, it says that cosine of 2 theta, that is the same thing as having 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And then I also have the plus 1 right there, so that's where I get the plus 1 from. So I have that information. I'm going to try my best to simplify this such that I get cotangent of theta on that side. So what do I see that I can do right away? Well, I notice that I have a negative 1 and a positive 1, so those are just going to um, cancel, leaving with 0. Okay, and you probably can see where this is going um, then from here. So the 2s are going to end up um, canceling. The squared, or sort of one of the cosine of theta is going to cancel with this one, such that we are just left with cosine of theta all over sine of theta. All right. So these are these little identity games that we are playing. And hopefully you recall one of the very first identities that we learned about uh, one of our quotient identities is that cosine of theta divided by sine of theta is equal to cotangent of theta, such that we've shown that the left-hand side is equal to the 
right hand side. Okay, let's take a look at B. B has uh, cotangent of theta cosecant two theta is equal to one over two sine squared theta. So it's perhaps a crapshoot as to which side you want to deal with here, the left hand side or the right hand side. I'm going to choose the left hand side really because we just have um, two terms, so I think that is is perhaps more complicated. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to deal with is I don't like having uh, cotangent theta, so I'm going to go and try to express everything in terms of sine and cosine. So um, this is one of the identities we just used. We know that cotangent of theta is equal to cosine of theta all divided by sine theta. Okay, so that's that one. And then cosecant of 2 theta, well, um, we can get rid of the cosecant uh, in the fact that we can write in terms of sine by making it 1 over sine of 2 theta. All right, so we've dealt with that. And then you'll recall that using one of these double angle identities, we can figure out what sine of 2 theta is going to be. And sine of 2 theta is one of those ones where you don't really have any choice. So I'm going to express this as 1 over 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. Okay. So from here, uh, we have some simplifying that we can do. This is going to cancel right here, those cosine of thetas. And lo and behold, we've got ourselves to where we need to be. We have 1 over 2 sine theta squared, just like so. Okay, So we can say that the um, left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side here, right? Both sides are equal to 1 over 2 sine squared theta. Last but not least here, uh, example four, we have a question that we need to solve. So it says solve the equation 1 half sine 2x minus cosine squared x is equal to 0. And then notice that we're given the domain between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so to get started with this one, again, I would recognize that we have uh, an identity that we can use right here for the sine uh, 2x. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with uh, uh, 2 sine of x cosine of x, right? So that's that one identity that we can use right there. Uh, minus cosine squared x is equal to zero, all right? Okay, and because all the terms are being multiplied together right here, you can simply just go one half times two is just one, so those terms right there will cancel out. So we are left with, at this stage, we have sine x cos x minus cosine squared x is equal to zero. Now, hopefully you recall, this is very similar to um, a question you might have where you have, I don't know, maybe 2x minus x squared right there, where you want to factor out an x from both terms. What we're going to do right here is we're going to factor out um, a cosine of x from uh, both of these two terms. So if we factor out a cosine of x, we are left with sine of x minus cos of x is equal to 0. All right. And so now, because each of these are my factors, I'm going to go and write my two separate factors such that I have cosine of x is equal to 0, and I have sine of x minus cosine of x is equal to 0. Okay. So let's go and figure out what my first solution is going to be with this cosine of x is equal to 0. So in order to do that, like I've been doing, I'm going to um, draw my quadrants out right here. I'm going to draw a triangle. And because I have the ratio for cosine, cosine is your adjacent over hypotenuse. This is the same thing as 0 over 1, if you will. So that's 0 and that's 1. That would make this side 1. This is that 1. I think you're starting to get used to that that collapses towards 90 degrees. But of course, because we are in radians, we're going to write that as x is equal to pi over 2. Now again, you would need to try all your quadrants. So this one would be 0, 1, and 1, and it's going to go to 90 degrees. This one would be 0, uh, negative 1 technically, and 1, and this one goes to 3 pi over 2. Okay, And if I was to put one in this quadrant, it would also collapse right to here. Okay, so you might be um, getting the hang of these so that you might not need to draw all your triangles out for that, but that is how I get those two solutions. All right. Now, this one over here is somewhat unique because what I'm going to do is if you go and set sine of x is equal to cosine of x, you might not really be sure what to do from there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an identity to help me out here again. If I divide both sides by cosine of x, that is great for the right-hand side, right? That just gives me a 1. That's nice. But then, if you recall, one of our uh, quotient identities says that sine of x over cosine of x is actually equal to tangent of x. All right. So I will write out my quadrants again, such that I have something in the first quadrant. I have something in the second quadrant, right here and here, using the cast rule. Um, the ratio for tangent is 1 over 1. This would be root 2, technically, and 1 over 1. I guess negative 1 and negative 1, root 2. What is that reference angle that I'd have right here? Well, opposite from the 1, that would be the 45. But because we are in uh, radians, that's going to be pi over 4 and pi over 4. And then lastly, we're coming from standard position. So what can I add to my solutions right here? We would have a pi over 4 
and we would have a 5 pi over 4. All right. So those are my four solutions uh, that we have for that question. And this completes uh, our lesson on double angle identities and uh, our unit on uh, solving trigonometric equations and trigonometric identities. Thank you very much.